Gamora is no Mora. This is Hello. Infinity War spoilers. <laughs> <laughs> That's the most enthusiastic I've been on. I was, intro. I was wondering how long you're going to drag that. Oh, for <laughs> well, it would have been a little bit longer if I had a better lung capacity. But hey, welcome to Spoilers. <laughs> uh, on tonight's episode, we got Money Mike. Money Mike, who's your favorite Avenger? Uh, my favorite Avenger? Uh, Iron Man's pretty cool. But uh, Captain America's pretty cool in this movie, too. Also, recording from North Carolina, we got Jordan. Jordan, I picture you as a Captain America guy, maybe a Star Lord guy. Do I have you uh, right? Yeah, I mean, this movie, I feel like Captain America wasn't in it a lot, so it kind of made me miss him, but also Rocket's pretty great if he counts as an Avenger. Rabbit. The Rabbit. <laughs> <laughs> of course, we also got Brett Kelly. Brett, I'm going to guess that you're a Scarlet Witch guy. Do I have that right? <laughs> No, uh, uh, probably uh, a Thor or Doctor Strange guy. Thor's come a long way. Ragnarok was really good. Doctor Strange sucks. Yeah, well, I love Benedict Cumberbatch, so. And last. You suck. But not least, we have our superhero correspondent. It wouldn't be a Marvel movie or a big movie without having Pat Kelly. They call him PK on the podcast. I know you're fired up about this movie, Pat. Oh, I'm going to start mine with the last line of the movie. My God. (laughs) Um, Yeah. First off, if you've listened to the past Marvel pods, you probably know my favorite Avenger is Spider-Man. But uh, I think in this movie, I think Thor won me over, though. He was fucking awesome in this movie. So I'm going to give it to him for this for the Infinity Wars, he was my favorite. The way that I want to talk about this today is that they kind of break up the uh, Avengers. So I just kind of want to run through the different pairings and then feel free to spoil any part of that uh, grouping that you or that we talk about. So first we have Doctor Strange, Tony Stark, Wong from uh Doctor Strange, Bruce Banner, a.k.a. the Hulk, and Spider-Man kind of teaming up and going to Titan. Uh, Pat, we'll start with you. What what did you think about this grouping, I guess, of Strange, Dark, Wong, Banner, and Spider-Man? Well, I I was never the biggest fan of the Doctor Strange movie, to be honest. So I think his best roles has, has been, like, the little cameos he's made, like, in Thor Ragnarok, or, like, his role in this one. I actually like Doctor Strange a lot, so... The banter between, you know, Downey Jr. and Benedict Cumberbatch, Jesus, um, and like Iron Man and Doctor Strange, it was great just seeing those two assholes go head to head because they both have giant egos and giant heads. So that was fun. And then you got giant, Peter, giant who's goatees. Just so, oh, oh yeah. And then you got Peter, who's just he's just always trying to impress Mr. Stark, aka Tony Stark. I love how he calls him Mr. Stark still. He's just a child, and yeah, I thought it was fun. It was a good group. That whole dynamic, you have, like, Iron Man and Doctor Strange fighting. It's like dad and dad are fighting, and then Peter's just kind of caught in the middle, like, (laughs) trying to be all positive all the time. Exactly. Money, what about you? Uh, On this group, um, I kind of forget when these people, or who has met and not met. So when these, when Doctor Strange and, like, Tony Stark kind of start butting heads, I totally realized that, oh, these two guys have never met in the 20 movies that they've made. So no wonder they kind of hate each other. (laughs) So I thought it was kind of funny how we finally get to see all these kind of interactions that have never happened so far. I think it's really funny. And so what what are they trying to do again? It's like Hulk crashes through the roof and then I I forget. Pat, I know you've seen this twice. Maybe Brett. Yep. What, how do these how do these guys end up on the ship? I kind of forget that part. So basically, uh, Hulk comes crashing down, warns them Thanos is coming. Then I'm assuming he he tells Doctor Strange he needs to contact Tony Stark. Then they come through the portal to to wherever Doctor Strange is at. 
Then the the ship comes down and and the two World of Warcraft character looking things. I don't know what their names were. Lord Voldemort and whole, some yeah, other guy. The whole time, all, all of, uh, Thanos is like Hulk. children or henchmen. They all looked like WoW characters to me. But like the CGI was very good on them still. But so then yeah, they start fighting and they take Doctor Strange, and uh, then they just go after him and. They all get stuck on the ship. The one, I think his name is Ebony Maw. He yeah, reminds me of yeah. like the mouth of Sauron. Brett, have you ever seen like, the extended edition Lord of the Rings where that guy comes out and he's like, you will die. And then Aragorn cuts his head off. Yeah. What? Do you know who did the voice <laughs> of, of that guy? Because it sounded like the guy from Star Wars, uh, General Hux. It it was His name is was Tom it? Vaughn Lawler. It was not. like I thought he sounded really familiar, but I don't know him from anything. Okay, he's, in, okay. he's in Peaky Blinders, but I haven't seen that. Okay. Yeah, it sounded just like him. Well, Brett, uh, let's talk about your favorite character. So you got Rocket, Groot, and Thor kind of teaming up, and they run into uh, Tyrion Lannister. Um, and so their whole <laughs> their whole hustle is they got to make a new hammer, a new axe for Thor. What did you What did you think about this plot, Brett? Well. First of all, you asked my favorite Avenger earlier. Like my favorite character in this movie was Thanos. Just want to get that out there. Right oh, now. we're gonna talk oh, about dude. Thanos. I got a note okay. here that says, "Talk about Thanos." Yeah, we'll save him for. First later. of all, it's like really surreal to see Thor and like Rocket together. That was my favorite. I thought favorite they were really funny. The yeah, they were really really funny together. And that uh, my probably my favorite line of the whole movie came from my favorite exchange of the whole movie came from that scene when he's like. You'll, it'll kill you. He's like, only if I die. And he's like, that's what killing you means. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Peter Dinklage was pretty funny. I like how he was like a kind of a giant. See, I really like that. Because I bet he gets tired of like getting all of these roles to play little people. But it's like, okay, you're a dwarf. And he probably like throws the script away. And like, wait, wait, wait. You're a giant dwarf. And he like takes the script <laughs> back up. He's like, all right, let me. <laughs> now I'm listening. All right. <laughs> and so like... This plot, you brought up Star Wars. It, it kind of reminds me of... This reminded last... me so much of Star Wars. I'm so glad you said that because I asked somebody that earlier today and they're like, no. I was like, there's a couple moments when they're flying into like the planets. I was like, this is like straight Star Wars, but like in a good mm -hmm. way. Yeah, it's almost like they're, they're trying to transition in like the cosmic cinematic universe. But even like mm -hmm. to the point in The Last Jedi where they had to have this side plot of Canto Bite, the casino... This kind of feels like the side plot of the movie because it's not really directly involved in the conflict with Thanos until much later. Yeah, but at, at, the, at the same time, I feel like there were no wasted storylines, though. Like, when the big knock on uh, The Last Jedi was that that casino scene just had nothing to do with it. It was just like, oh, look at this casino. But I feel like every storyline in this kind of led back to the main conflict. I know you, it was like slow and you were kind of talking about it didn't really lead to any Thanos conflict till the very end, but, but I, know, I, I, think, I think there were no, yeah. In my opinion, out of this pairing, we got, in my opinion, it was one of my favorite scenes. The Because uh, I love when Rocket and Chris Pratt always go back and forth about who's the captain of the ship. Mm -hmm. And then the moment when he notices Thor is like bummed out and he goes, well, it's time to be captain. And I fucking love that because he goes back <laughs> And he's like, so, dead brother, huh? That sucks, or something like that. And, <laughs> and then it's like, you see Thor is trying to, like, cover it up with some, some humor, and but then he you you feel, you realize, like, you, you he reveals how old he is, how many people he's killed. His, like, he basically reveals that he's all alone, and he's just, just he's a lonely old man. Mm. And it's just like, he's just like, Thanos is just, he's just another one in the way. He's like, if fate has it, then I'll fucking... I'll take him down too, but then he's like, well, "What? What if you're wrong?" And it's just like it struck me to the core. He's like, "Then I'll. What else do I have to lose?" I was yeah, like, was man, good. that was such a good scene. Well, like everything that like Star Lord does, whether he's interacting with Thor in the beginning or Iron Man later on, like he's such a funny character because he's a little incompetent, but he's also very bossy. So he's always trying to like <laughs> get the one up on whoever he's talking to. Um, and that that does bring us to our third kind of group. We got. Gamora, Drax, Star-Lord, and Mantis. And, and they start off by meeting Thor 
whose whose family in Ragnarok was apparently just fucking murdered to death <laughs> pretty unceremoniously. And then uh, they end up on Titan uh, with the first group we talked about, uh, Iron Man and Company. Jordan, I know you weren't the biggest fan of this movie. Um, I guess, is there anything you remember about the Gamora, Drax, Star-Lord, Mantis group that kind of stuck out or that you didn't like? Yeah, I mean, I think that there were definitely some things from the last group that I missed on because I did not see all of Ragnarok or any of Thor Ragnarok. Um, I heard it was good. I just hadn't had a chance to see it yet. Um, But this next group, I feel like it kind of shifts pretty quickly into Gamora's kind of backstory with Thanos, which I thought is... I I mean, it, it... it works for the movie. I wish that there was more of it in previous Guardians movies, though. Like, I really didn't like the last Guardians movie that much, and I feel like they could have mm-hmm. transitioned better into this movie with like a better constructed plot, like overall to the big storyline. Um, but yeah, they well, they do a couple of flashbacks, and I mean, it, it, it pays off in the end. There are a couple of things with that too, because like, what's what's Gamora's sister's name? Someone help me out. Andromeda. Nebula. 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 I knew it was some space yeah. thing. <laughs> <laughs> Polaris, Brett, uh, Milky yeah, Way Galaxy. <laughs> yeah, yeah uh, my bad. I knew, I knew, I knew. <laughs> So the Ooh. Big Dipper is, well, there's this whole plot with, like, Gamora knows the path to the Soul Stone, but she tears mm-hmm. it up. That never happened in any other movies, right? That was just kind of a throwaway line of dialogue to move things along? Or does anyone remember I can't that? I remember. That might, that might have been from the second one at some point. Like, when they're talking to each other, because I know they have some, like, intimate, like, dialogue scenes with each other in the second one, but I don't know for sure. I feel like that was definitely in one of the previous two Guardians ones. Yeah. Well, I mean, either way, it it serves as some kind of device where Thanos now needs to go with Gamora to get the Soul Stone. And we'll, we'll get to Thanos, but he's bouncing back and forth between all these locations, just catching all the stones, like gathering them up like a hungry, hungry hippo. Um, but <laughs> like we said at the beginning, Gamora kills herself. Mikey, what what did you think in that whole setup? Like, did you see Gamora's death coming? Were you surprised? Did you cry in the theater? Well, she doesn't kill herself. Uh, Thanos chucks her uh, over he the side of a yeah, yeah, yeah. over the side of a she, mountain. She wanted to kill herself so that way he couldn't kill her. Yeah, yeah. because the whole point of getting uh what is it the soul infinity stone is it requires a soul so thanos had to sacrifice sacrifice the one thing he loves most and gamora was like oh you don't love anything so you're kind of fucked here you can't get the soul stone and i guess in thanos's mind gamora was the one thing he loves the most so he chucks her over uh the side of the mountain and gets the soul (laughs) stone somehow they don't exactly show him getting the soul stone, I guess it just kind of floats to his hand. I I assume, uh, but I don't know. I guess it was all kind of set up to that. I mean, when whoever explains that it requires a soul, I kind of figure that that's the only person Thanos really cares about. So it was kind of obvious to me, I guess. But uh, I don't expect anything less from Thanos, so it wasn't too shocking to me. I, he seems pretty ruthless. I think it was more shocking just to see how upset he was. Yeah, that's that. That was. A, I thought that was a really cool revelation that I didn't see coming. Is that you know the music like, was fucking epic during that scene. Yeah. Just say yeah, he does cry. So that her. was like kind of interesting because yeah. he just wipes out half the universe, and he doesn't care too much about that. Oh man, I can't wait to talk talk about Thanos. We'll talk about that later. <laughs> All right, yeah, we got we got one more kind of group that I want to talk about, and then we'll get to to Thanos and his motivations and everything. But we have Vision and a Russian accent less Scarlet Witch. <laughs> She's been doing Rosetta Stone. She's really good Shit, at English. I didn't now. even notice that. That's funny. Dude, I, didn't I noticed it right away. I was so confused. I was like, wait, what? <laughs> She's been trying less and less ever since what Iron Man three or something. Just. She's whittling been down on the she's accent. Been living in Scotland. Yeah. <laughs> Too much haggis, but uh <laughs> she teams up with Captain America or eventually Captain America, her vision, Black Widow, War Machine, T'Challa, Bucky, Falcon, T'Challa, <laughs> Hulk, everybody ends up in Wakanda for a big showdown which kind of amounts to 
Um, what are these creatures that they're fighting? They're like dogs? Hellhounds? Yeah. Some hellhounds versus all of these guys. Um, Pat, did you like that final battle or, or that big battle in Wakanda? What was going through your head during all that? Uh, I mean, it was cool, I guess. It was, I don't know, it was the worst like action sequence in the movie to me. It started to feel like, like Justice League a little bit. We got a bunch uh, of nameless, little, faceless I baddies. Know. I don't know if it was that bad, but it was just kind of... My favorite part of that scene, though, was... Oh, man, when fucking Captain America comes out of nowhere flying like 60 miles an hour down the field. You know what I'm talking about? When him and uh, Black Panther are like sprinting ahead of yeah. the group. Yeah, yeah that was that was pretty cool. Flies. This, that, that was so funny. But I think... I don't know. It was just... They hyped it up in the trailer... And it ended up being, like, the least cool fight scene. Just because, like, at the same time as that was going on, they had the fight scene on Titan with Spider-Man and Iron Man. And that was fucking amazing. So it was, like, every time it went back, I was like, dude, get us back to that. Yeah. When Thor shows up, though. Yeah, when Thor shows up, then it changed. That was, like, my goosebump scene right there. In the trailer, they have, like, Hulk destroying a bunch of shit or running around and... Mark Ruffalo yeah. is stuck in the uh, what the Hulkbuster suit or something. He never yeah. even turns into Hulk in this movie, does he? He's got boner problems. At yeah. the beginning, Hulk, doesn't Hulk get his ass beat by Thanos? That's oh, why yeah. he's oh, yeah. a scared now. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I like I like the way like they have Bruce Banner kind of being more funny, especially mm-hmm. after Thor Ragnarok. He kind of had to be, but yeah, he was just a straight bitch in this movie. <laughs> I mean, I, I hate. I'm sorry, Mark Ruffalo. Like, it's not you, but like, your character was just like, he was a bitch. Can't After get you hard got your ass kicked, you got, but I mean, it, it, it's kind of powerful because it shows like how how powerful Thanos is. Because well, he, he also had the he also had the power the power stone at the time. Exactly. So it wasn't a fair fight to begin with, and I'd like to yeah. see them without. The stone, but. but that was that was epic seeing him just switch the gear mm-hmm. and start whipping his ass. Mm-hmm. I'm I'm with you though. There's something about Mark Ruffalo trying to get the Hulk up is very uncomfortable <laughs> for me to watch. Yeah, it was it was kind of awkward. <laughs> Feels like a Cialis commercial gone awry. Uh, Jordan, this whole like action sequence. Now, don't take this the wrong way, but like this whole movie kind of feels like the last 20 minutes of the Phantom Menace. Just because Dude, you I have all s- these, that that, <laughs> that battle scene is like the the Naboo fight scene or whatever planet it's on. <laughs> it looks like Naboo. You're cutting back from that to a scene in space to a to a more intimate combat scene. Jordan, what did you think of this this big final battle? And then like any of these other characters other than Thanos, who uh, we may have passed over. No, yeah, I mean, I think you're right that it does just feel like faceless enemies just like swarming and the good guys kind of holding them off and then you kind of switch back and forth to the space battle um i mean i think the the story on titan is much more interesting when they're trying to make like an actual plan to get the gauntlet off of thanos's hand um and like that's definitely like pat said it's definitely the one like go back to that shit because i want to see what they're doing and just like these faceless bastards coming after like some cool like battle characters isn't really doing it for me also there's a scene where like not not even a scene but like the entire movie um scarlett johansson's character black widow i'm like what are you even doing here because like you're just a you're just like a fast human that can do flips and stuff and you have a couple of handguns i don't really know why you're in this it's it's a little too much for me well hawkeye's about to get joe rogan and all his other bow hunting buddies and start tearing up (laughs) Thanos too like kind of got the same thing going cameron Haynes. yeah i mean like at least war machine can fly <laughs> and like the um and iron man and uh his buddy they like have the suits and all that but she's just literally a human with guns and like it's not gonna cut it against these screaming alien characters that are coming she gets in. knocked around a couple times by thanos and like oh she's dead nope she just yeah. popped right back up yeah like, what, what's she doing <laughs> all right so we're, we're at the 20 minute mark uh we're got to try to keep this short tonight. Brett, I know you got homework, but I don't want to leave this podcast before you get a chance to talk about Thanos. Um, your catchphrase for a very, very short time on the podcast was you constantly snapping it in the microphone. I'm glad you've given that up, but what did you think about <laughs> Thanos and Thanos' snaps in this movie? 
I don't understand the reference to that, but oh, the snap. You used okay. to go like um, this in the microphone. Oh, you yeah. Remember that? I just did it last time, so it's still a thing. You just oh, reminded me. I don't know. I, I, I know some people complain about him, but I thought he was so well done. Um, he, you know, he's some psychotic mass murderer, but he barely raised his voice the whole movie, and he's like super calm and collective, and I don't know. Josh Brolin I thought was awesome. I know some people complained about the CGI, but I thought what? that he looked That's awesome. Great. I thought he looked awesome, and to hear that someone said that they can't do good bad guys anymore, I mean, that to me, just I'm I'm floored by that. I don't I don't know what people are watching. Honestly, who said so, that, Brett? I'll, Brett, who said that? My sister heard some guy say it on their way out of the theater. Is that I guess Marvel can't write good bad guys oh, anymore? Fucking dare he! Um, <laughs> I love the joke that they made about him uh, having like a ball sack chin. That was yeah. I laughed oh, so dude. hard. Star Lord had some <laughs> funny lines. That whole sequence of that la- that ball sack, he was just laying it into him. <laughs> I'll say this. I don't want to, like, hate on Thanos because I, I love Josh Brolin. I love the character. I love how, like you said, Brett, he's very controlled and reserved. And he's it almost makes him scarier because he's not mm-hmm. over-the-top angry like a, like a Stephen Wolf or something stupid. But <laughs> he, he, everyone coming out of this movie was like, oh, you know, Thanos' motivations are so good. You know, oh, it's another Killmonger. We got a good villain with good motivations. Like, is he literally just trying to kill half the motherfuckers so there's less people, so there's more to go around? Is that's, is that his plan? Yes. That's yeah, kind of yeah. what he said on his planet, yeah. I mean, Does he understand how like, exponential growth works? Yeah, like, <laughs> I don't think he has good, like, uh, whatever. I don't, I'm, like, blanking on words. Right Motives? Like, anyway, rationale. yes. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Good motivation. But, like, he is 100% behind his beliefs and that's why I think is it makes him a good villain because like no matter even if it, it's not the right thing to do he is 100% behind the fact that this is what he was born to do nobody else sees it the right way I'm going to do this no matter what it takes and to him he's not the bad guy because he he is trying to save everybody like yes he's killing thousands of or millions and trillions of people but like he said when if he got all the stones and literally snapped his fingers that's mercy because he's not actually going and making people suffer they just disappear so he was trying, know, man. peter parker he's, was freaking out a little bit he was dude, like mom we'll get to that we'll get to that <laughs> he was I'll, trying I, to uh, uh, restore balance <laughs> he was trying to restore balance to the force because like he said his home his home planet like he saw it happening there. He brought up the the plan. They thought he was fucking crazy, and then they went to shit, and they all starved and all that shit. So it's like mm-hmm. he's seen it happen, and he just—it's all about balance to him, but in a fucked up way. Mm-hmm. I did like the scene, the one flashback with him and Gamora, real quick, when he mm-hmm. was showing her the little knife thing, and it's like it shows he has a the little balance. bit of a heart, and yeah. it's like. She starts to look as they're slaughtering all her fucking people, and he like puts her his hand up and toward turns her head towards the thing again. So it's like he has some some sort of moral code, but it's definitely more fucked up than most. No, and I'm with you too because there was also like another I don't know if it was like a flashback or like some kind of like tripping sequence, but he's like with baby Gamora in what looks like a kind of like a Japanese type. Like, is that when it was all orange? Yeah, it's yeah. like all orange and like it's this big reflecting pool. Like, I really like it when Marvel does like this abstract imagery like that and just like you know shows pretty pictures, like shows cool shit. You know what I mean? Like, mm-hmm. that's. <laughs> I thought I originally, I honestly thought the movie was gonna end right there. I thought it was just gonna be like talking to her and then it was gonna end. I was like, no fucking way. <laughs> Well, any uh, any other thoughts that you guys have? Any? Uh, we'll I, I got, give our yes I got one stuff, question. But... Yeah, go ahead, Mike. So, uh, so uh, I thought the whole point of Ragnarok was uh, he he gets Mjolnir. Mjolnir is uh, destroyed. I thought the whole point of Ragnarok was that he has he has the power inside of him the whole time. He just had to believe. He doesn't need a weapon or something, and then. 
in this movie they had to go build another weapon. I thought the whole point was that well, he I just had to believe. It, he it was it more himself. like it was more like he can do like the lightning and shit with himself. But I think to actually kill Thanos, he needed the actual like the, Stormbreaker, the, the, like King's weapon, you know. Um, also, I know what you're saying. Though. Also, the whole point of Ragnarok was to save his family. Or all of his people, and as and soon as they're totally done, he's like, failed. "Fuck that! I'm getting a fucking <laughs> weapon, dude." <laughs> yeah, I can't do this. Yeah, like is, sword. at the beginning of this movie, all of his, all of his people are murdered. Right? He's like the last one, isn't he? Mm-hmm. Yeah, it kind of makes uh, Ragnarok not just kind of like makes it like it didn't happen. You know, when you see a movie and it ends kind of happily, and then you know the next movie. You know, thirty seconds later, and they're all dead. This almost kind of takes away the meaning from Ragnarok, but it doesn't really bother me that much, I guess. Loki's death was like super sad. Yeah. Holy shit, that was dark. Yeah, yeah it was pretty it was rough. real dark. Him getting Man. choked. Yeah, it was bad. It was I, I looked over at the people I was with. I was like, oh shit, I'm not ready. <laughs> <laughs> and this. Speaking this of brings... that. Yeah, go ahead. All right, go ahead. No, no, no. Well, I was gonna say this. This brings me to like what I want to kind of end on like this is one of the final thoughts here but definitely get you guys feedback is that yeah Loki's death was really effective because I knew it was permanent when you have Spider-Man and Black Panther and Doctor Strange aka half a billion dollars worth of opening (laughs) weekends alone like disappear (laughs) you know they're gonna come back and so to me like that Thanos snapping and making everyone disappear it kind of devalued the other deaths but in a way, it was cool because it sets up, like, you know, the OG Avengers in the last movie. All of the new guys are kind of the ones who disappeared. Was was anybody else kind of iffy on the last scene? Jordan, I know you were, right? No yes. <laughs> it was so, like, it just felt so cheap because as soon as, like, the first two, I forget who the first two, like, big names are to Bucky disappear. And yeah. Else. So Bucky and then Black Panther go, and then I'm like, oh, that's interesting. And then it's like all, like you said, all the new people, and I'm like, well, obviously that can't be a permanent move. So then my mind just yeah. like it, like right away it goes to like, oh, how the fuck are they going to reverse all of this? And it it feels like the ending of the movie is more of a kind of like a setup cliffhanger where if they would have like, at least like mixed it up a little bit, I think that they could have maybe kept people on the edge a little bit more. But like you you know, and like I know I know the movie is meant for younger people that maybe aren't reading all the background stuff about how there's going to be another Avengers and all this stuff. Like, it's a comic book movie. I get it. But it, like, right away, my mind pointed to, like, how how are they going to, like, fix this? Not, oh, shit, I'm sad because these people are dead. Because they're not. They're going to come back. Well, that's the thing is, all you have to do is, like, go on the internet and look at who has a contract coming up. Who's still doing these right. movies in the next but, five I mean, years. Don't, that's Don't do that shit. It's no, that's no fun. Just well, like, it's not. It's I, on I, Twitter I, all I, the I time. I, I know. I know. <laughs> you I can't know, avoid I know. it. It's just like people are so fucking lame nowadays. Like, dude, just have fun. Like, speculate. Like, I don't, I don't even. Movies. Like, why Why do you need to read all the spoilers beforehand? And shit? I, I mostly agree. This is but I, don't, it would, I, I mostly agree, but it's. Welcome I've, to Spoilers. I've stayed away from the. You know I mean? <laughs> I've stayed away from like the contract shit. Like I, I don't really pay attention to that. I don't really care. But I do know that there is a fourth Avengers movie that's going to come out in one year, and so exactly, it's, so it's, it's pretty like, clear. You know, you know yeah, they're but, come, like, dude, yeah. It, but it doesn't change the fact that Peter Parker dying in Tony Stark's arms, saying like, "I don't want to, I don't want to go." Like, dude, oh, that fucking brutal, like man. broke my heart, mm-hmm. dude. Oh, that Tom Holland kid man. can act like a motherfucker. Yeah, and, he's good. And, like the one part that makes it more fucked up is I, I I didn't like pick up on this until I heard somebody talking about it, and then I picked up on the next time. Like right at the beginning when Tony Stark and Pepper are talking, he's telling her about like a super vivid dream that he had where they had a kid and all this stuff, and he woke up and it was fake and it was gone. And it's like you know, like Peter Parker is the closest thing he's he has or probably ever will have to being a, a son. And it's basically like he just watched his son. And it goes all the way back to, like, Civil War, where he fucking goes and recruits him. And to Homecoming, where basically he says, like, you know, if anything were to happen to them, that's on you. But if anything happens to you, that's on me. So it's like, man, just there's so much weight to that scene if you really think about it. It's like, fuck. Even if he, he, even if he does come back, you know he will, but fuck, man. 
That shit was rough. I forgot about that scene in Homecoming. That's a good fucking call. Um, yeah. Well, true. let's. We're at thirty minutes. Uh, feel free to take your time though. If you have any other questions for the group, feel free to uh, broach them. But Pat, you're our most enthusiastic. You're our superhero correspondent. We couldn't do the Infinity War spoilers episode one sixty without you. Um, <laughs> what? Give us your yes or no, which I'm pretty sure it's going to be a yes, and then kind of some thoughts on Infinity War, the MCU, any, anything you want to talk about. Floor's yours. Um, 100% yes. I'm going to go see it for a third time, probably this week sometime. Um, the MCU, like, I understand it's not for everybody. I'm not going to sit here and, and bitch at people because they don't like Marvel movies. Like, whatever. If you don't like it, cool. Like, then to me, you're missing out. Whatever. But I think it's just, it's just, some people don't realize, like, why I'm so hyped up. And it's like, dude, if you think about it, this literally has been building up for 10 years. Mm -hmm. Like, I was in high school when this shit first started, and it's just like, oh my gosh, like, this is nuts. Like, Iron Man, Tony Stark's been, or Robert Downey Jr. has been Tony Stark since 2007. It's just like, it's just something you don't see in movies a lot. And yeah, people are getting bored with them and stuff, but dude, after this movie... I I, don't, I could go like a lot more with these, so I don't know. I loved it. I uh, and I just love how Disney had the fucking balls to end it with Thanos smiling over the sunrise like he said he would if he like somebody asked him what he would do if he if he did it, and he's like, I'd watch the sunrise over a happy universe. And actually, I listened to the soundtrack this morning, and the the song that's playing during that part really reminded me of the Game of Thrones soundtrack because it was like super dark and kind of suspicious and then but literally right as he smiles the very last note is like a major key so it ends on like almost like a happy note but major to everybody key. in the audience it's so fucked up and it's just like are you serious literally the best part of because i went and saw it at the theater where they premiered it the el capitan or whatever and uh <laughs> it was a live crowd like like everybody's cheering like when somebody came on the screen but my favorite was this lady when literally as the screen went to black as he's smiling she goes oh hell no (laughs) (laughs) so fucking fun (laughs) so yeah go fucking see this movie like this is something that deserves to be the box office biggest box office opening of all time it's already in my opinion (laughs) so brett i know you got some homework uh Give us your yes, no, which I'm pretty sure it's going to be a yes. But I, also the, the end credit scene, we were talking about it a little bit earlier today. I don't know if you have anything to say about that, Brett, but the floor is yours. Talk about what you want. Uh, well, it's definitely a yes. I, I'm an, uh, notoriously bad at looking at deeper meanings in movies. I kind of just watch the movie, and then people kind of remind it to me. And my sister, after the movie, kind of blew my mind. I don't know. Maybe everyone picked up on this, but when Doctor Strange is going through the 15 million scenarios he said only three of them you know that they won on and then right before he he's no, explaining only one was it one yeah. yeah and then he when he's talking to captain america he told him uh, when he's talking to iron man he told him that he wouldn't trade his life for the stone and then he's yeah, kind of explaining I was to him that talk about that but I forgot yeah about this. kind of explaining that this had to happen because you know that's the one thing or i guess pat says one i thought it was three but it's one he's seen it twice so just that's what had to happen for them to win. So that's why I think it kind of rectifies the whole half the people disappear. I don't know. I love this movie. I thought Thanos was awesome. And uh, I'm excited for two, like, so much. That's all I got. All right. Go go do your homework, Brett. No, Jordan, I'll wait. I'll wait. <laughs> Jordan, <laughs> go ahead. Uh, I wanted to start with Pat. Or, yeah, Pat. I I kind of had a similar reaction in my in my theater after the, after the movie was over when the like fades to black after that and there was a combination of what the fuck and fuck that shit from like the crowd (laughs) like it was like a very visceral reaction there were a few times when like the crowd applauded and stuff like when captain america came out i clapped i clapped for sure yeah and so there were like my crowd was pretty lively as well because i saw it on friday night and it was it was packed um so that was an interesting reaction uh i think that Pappy, you kind of hit on something, the, f- the fighting in this movie. There's a few scenes. There's a couple when they're fighting Thanos, when especially like when Iron Man's fighting him, and he's just Thanos is just kicking his ass. Like Iron Man can't hurt him. Um, and there's a few scenes where they're fighting like the 
war dogs or whatever they are down on uh, down on Wakanda. That it's just like kind of useless punching. Um, my girlfriend Kirsten actually fell asleep for like the last forty five minutes oh. of the movie, and she woke. She, she <laughs> I know. I I kept trying to like wake her up. No, no. But she woke up and she was like, "Weren't they just fighting during that part of the movie?" And I was like, uh, "Kind of, yeah." That's actually, the whole movie. <laughs> yeah. I mean, um, it basically was like the whole scene in Black Panther. It was essentially the same fight scene. Yeah, to, to an extent. There, I feel like the stakes were a bit higher in uh, Black oh, Panther, at least like personally. But, uh, <laughs> yeah, I mean, the, the fighting that, like, the Avengers movies come down to is still kind of disappointing in the end. Um, and my other, I guess my takeaway, my big takeaway was, like, if you take this as a spectacle and, like, the buildup of all this stuff, I think it's really, really cool. And they pull it off pretty well with, like, the kind of, Pappy, like you said, like, the mini movies that kind of happen with, like, throughout this, um, like, the little pairings that we get. But then there's two things that kind of screw with my head a little bit throughout the whole movie and one is like the reality stone that Thanos has where he can just fuck with anybody and like make them <laughs> make them shoot bubbles out of a gun multiple times and then there's also the time stone where he can just uh you fucked up my plan I'll just turn time back and like I'm good now and to me those are like kind of cheap ways out I know that they're all part of the story That's but point. I I don't I don't understand how they can like rectify that kind of square that circle um so i i like the spectacle of it but the story kind of has holes to me and it honestly it made me want to like read the comics because i feel it i feel that it probably comes off better in the comics than it will ever in a movie um so it's i think i think every one of these movies has gotten me closer and closer to actually going back and just reading the comics because everyone says that those are like bomb as fuck but uh (laughs) yeah i mean it's 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 a yes but i think that there are problems with it as well all right, Mikey. Uh, I agree with Jordan that it makes me want to read the comics. Uh, I came out of that thinking I should probably go buy Infinity War or something on Amazon. <laughs> uh, but this was a movie, I went into it, and I was like trying to keep my expectations like level. I knew it was going to be good, but I didn't want to get like too overhyped for it before it even began. But I could tell that I got there late, and it was already packed, and... I just kind of sat down next to this random kid and I could tell that he was like getting super anxious because he was like rocking his head back and forth. He was like getting into it. And so the movie finally starts and he was just all about Spider-Man. And when Spider-Man, he has these, these uh, legs that fly out from out of his back that kind of happen Fuck unexpectedly yeah. for him. And Iron I was Spider. like, Oh, yeah, his Iron Spider suit. And I was like, oh, fuck, yeah, that was awesome. And he's just, like, <laughs> nodding his head, yeah, that was fucking sweet. And we we're just kind of, like, feeding off of each other for the whole movie. That's it was cool. a lot of fun. See, dude, that's what that's what's going, going to these movies is all about, man. Like, have fun with it. Who cares about, like, like obviously, yeah, you can look, it's fun to look into, like, what's going to happen in the next movie. But, like, dude, I hate people that are, like, straight up look at the spoilers. Like, I mean, obviously, I'm on a podcast. This is spoilers. spoilers. <laughs> but, like... But you know what I'm saying, like, hopefully people don't listen to this until after the movie. But if they don't, then whatever. That's that's just me, I guess. But well, first of all, I want to say, man. yeah, I want to say thank you to everyone who is listening uh, to Spoilers Podcast now on Spotify. Uh, if you like what you're hearing, <laughs> you check out some of our other episodes where we review old movies, not just the new ones. We go back and we play some trivia. Uh, but for me, yeah, this is a yes. I think that the MCU is impressive because. It might be the only movie franchise where the films generally get stronger as time goes on. Um, That's a good point. I think Phase 1 has some of my least favorite Marvel movies. I'm really not a big fan of Iron Man. I hate the first two Thors. I think they're so boring. Oh, yeah. Um, But this is really the pinnacle because if you put in the work and you get to know the characters, now that you see them in a sandbox like this, there's really not anything else that compares to it and i'm not saying it's like the pinnacle of film or anything but you know who all the characters are and it allows the screenwriters to to do these little you know pairings like scooby-doo split ups you two go this way we'll go this way uh type deals and uh, you get to see them interact with each other in combinations you weren't expecting um i think that i i don't love the ending and i think it's pretty obvious that it's setting up for a OG Avengers real sacrifice to usher in these new phase three or phase two heroes. Um, But 
I'm looking forward to it. And, I mean, it's been 18 movies at this point. You, it'd be hard to not gain some kind of emotional attachment to these characters. So, five yeses. This movie is preserved. Brett, yeah. Woo! Thank you, Pat. Did, did Thank Mikey you, Brett. say yes? Oh, Mikey said Mine's yes. Mine's a yes. yes. Okay. I didn't hear you say it. Yeah, just a, just a quick thing, because I remember Jordan was saying, like, how the action in these Avengers movies kind of doesn't live up to the hype or whatever, or something like that. But, like, that's what I, like, you got to give, like, Rec- or, uh, fucking commend to like the Russo brothers cause fucking like I used to go to these movies for the action scenes basically and now I go because and like I was saying like my favorite scene of this mo- whole movie is probably that Rocket and Thor scene just of them talking it's like I would never have expected that I would expect like my favorite scene to be yeah like the big fight scene on, on Wakanda or whatever but no like I'm sitting over here, like, fucking tearing up when Thor is like, oh, I got nothing else to lose. And I'm like, man, like, it's so, it's so good. Like, no, yeah, yeah I, dude, I, I think you're right. That, fucking awesome, man. I think you're right. They've built up the characters to where they do have personality and it's not just punching. But um, before we sign off and everything, I do kind of want, like, I think, Pat, you'll probably be the best equipped to answer this. But the, uh, the post credit scene, the, like, Captain Marvel shit at the end. Do you have any uh, predictions with what's going to happen with that or what uh, what all that means? Shit. Uh, so I'm not a big, like, I don't know too much about Captain Marvel. By the next time I'm on this show, I will know a lot about Captain Marvel. <laughs> but uh, all I know is for sure the movie is supposed to take place in the 90s. So at some point, like, time travel is going to have to be involved at some, at some point. Okay. She's really all powerful. Yeah, she's very powerful. But she's, like, she's a fighter pilot, which is fucking badass. So I don't, yeah. So yeah, I don't. I'm unfortunately, as your superhero correspondent, I should know more, but I don't. Reconnect with me at a later time, and I'll definitely give you more information. <laughs> well, Fair enough. Luckily, we live in a world where we get three of these movies a year, so we'll talk to you <laughs> at least on Ant Man in and the July, Wasp, for if Ant-Man. not before. Oh, and I'm definitely in on uh, Deadpool. Oh, yeah, duh. Yeah. In like three weeks. <laughs> <laughs> well, we'll talk to you then, and hopefully, you at home will listen to us before that. Thanks for listening. Take it away, Spoiler Man. Spoiler Man. See you guys. See you, Brett. Good luck on your homework. Thank you. Thank you. I love you. Our email is podcastspoilers at gmail.com. Twitter is at spoilers underscore pod. Our Instagram is podcastspoilers. It's lit. Josh Hensley from the Rutabaga wrote our theme. Our number is 903-776-4507. And if you enjoyed what you heard today, subscribe on SoundCloud or iTunes. Please don't forget to leave us a review by searching for movie spoilers, clicking on the cereal bowl, select the reviews tab, and leave us some stars and some words. That was spoilers. You will die.